I need the rookies and the vipers to report the field six. And Lord there it is. is. Straight away center. Gone. That is. Nord, when he needed it, got it. And it's 5-2. to two. And Nord is trying to pump up his team. Anytime you have a national championship, you want you want everybody playing at their best as much as possible. And, uh... Hey, hey, everybody. DP here with the West Coast Wiffle Report. WCWR is where you find us on Spotify now. Uh, if you can, get on Spotify. If you use Spotify, uh, get on there, find us, and follow us there. Uh, maybe I'll have a gift for you. But anyway, uh, I wanted to give a shout-out before we get started to Greg Edwards' Etsy shop on it's Etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash Studio 21 Graphics, and that graphics is spelled uh, with an X at the end. He's got some really cool stuff on there. I got some stuff here in the studio that I'll take a picture of and post it up somewhere that he's uh, he's done for us. And he also uh, was the one that made the, the cool, um, they weren't plaques, they were like the handouts for the uh, all-tournament team there in Texas. So thanks, Greg. If you... Uh, Thinking about getting some prints for your house or your man cave or your uh, your van, uh, Give uh, check it out. It's pretty cool. He's got a lot of cool stuff on there. And they can do all kinds of things there. It's amazing. I got to make an appearance again on the Sports Limelight podcast. It was a really cool show. Uh, we talked about brushes with fame and... When we get Bill in here, we're gonna. I'm gonna talk about another one that I had that I forgot, forgot all about, and this is probably my number one, uh, number one favorite moment. And this weekend, I'm going to get uh, kick out the uh, fourth inning of the 2007 Wiffle Ball National Championship, Fast Plastic National Championship, in Austin, Texas. And my guest is going to be Joe Nord. We're going to talk about. Some of the things that are go that went on in the game and what his thoughts were on the controversy of remeasuring the mound. So that'll be fun. But tonight it's going to be Survivor in here to discuss it with me from the Sports Limelight is Bill. You know, Jim, uh, the, one of the Survivor contestants is also an Etsy shop owner, but there's no way she has stuff that's cool as cool as Greg Edwards. Oh, you are right. I had forgot about that, and we're going to have to get her site, and we'll do a comparison. We'll do a comparative analysis, if you will. Oh, that'll be fun. Something else I'm excited about, Bill, is next Wednesday, Joe is doing a Survivor Watch party in Tempe, and I am planning on going and hoping to maybe get... uh, a Joe autograph on a wiffle ball. That's the goal. Or maybe (laughs) just a small quote from him. uh, See if he will be willing to do that. And I, uh, do you have any questions uh, for Joe? If I should get to talk to him? I have a question about Joe. Is he from Tempe or does he happen to, what, what brings him here of all places? Yeah, he is from the uh, Phoenix area. I think he is from Tempe. Oh, nice. And he spends a lot of time in Utah. That's where, uh, Sierra lives. I don't know if you remember Sierra. Sierra's a big, tall girl. She's probably about six two or six three. She was. On, she's been on twice. She's one of my favorites. Hope, hoping she'll be there. If she can be there, and I can get both of them to sign a wiffle ball. That that'll my brush with fame. Everybody will be shifting down a spot. That's right. New top of the heap. You got that right. Can you get Joe to record a quick? Uh, this is Joe, and you're listening to the West Coast Wiffle Report. Something that like would that. be cool. I Tag was thinking, or whatever they're called. Yeah, I was wanting to ask him, and maybe you can help me with uh, some of the people I want to put in this question. Who would be better on Survivor? LeBron, mm-hmm. Bryce Harper, uh, Tom Brady, or Michael Jordan? That's kind of like the tops right now. Everybody argues about, right? No, oh, that's good. Yep. And 
Anthony Davis would demand a trade to a different island a year and a half before his survivor contract is up. So they would end up only playing him in like 30% of every challenge. Yeah, he, he's, he has no business even coming on Survivor with an attitude no. like that. My brush with fame I wanted to discuss here, we were watching the Pacers Suns game and uh, we were there and had my buddy Jim's tickets. So we were like at a 14th row and that's when Ron Artest was still on the Pacers. And I screamed out, True Warrior! That was his name for a while. And you know, True and Warrior both misspelled. That's why I spell those words wrong still. And of course. he was like standing off to the side. He was dressed in street clothes. I'm not sure what, what suspension or injury that was. He was currently in the middle of. But he was taking a drink of his water and he turned around and lifted his water bottle to me to, to acknowledge me. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, I I remember you told me about that a while ago, and I had forgotten about it. So it's good to good to remember that again. <laughs> but now we got all that out of the way. Uh, go ahead and listen to that at uh, SoundCloud dot com Sports Limelight. Is that uh, good? Is that where they find that, Bill? That's right. SoundCloud dot com slash Sports Limelight, or on Twitter at Sports Limelight. And check out Brushes with Fame, and uh, you'll hear. The, my other ones, and here's here Bill's too. Bill's got a really good one in there too. Okay, let's get started with Survivor. As we row in, we see the biggest fire any of us have ever seen. Guess what? I'm not just going to stand still and take the punch. I was a softball player, <laughs> and I still play softball. I'm on a women's softball team, so. Trust me, I can throw some low balls. To lose to someone who's 28 years old, who's six years older than me, it's like, how embarrassing is that? Life is supposed to be rich. Don't make it cheaper. Like LeBron in the finals, I won't take a breather. He might be good for, like, if we need, like, a little person to shove into something. And, like, you know what I mean? It wasn't really, like, a fair fight because, like, in undergrad, like, I wrote slider puzzle solving algorithms, so it's not really it. <laughs> I've been playing center field for 25 years. I can hit a catcher in the forehead. I have all these, like, weapons in my belt. I did used to toss a rock a little back in my prime, which means what? I used to play baseball back in college, and I pitched. I think I found my craft. For the next immunity challenge, yes. we'll go, hey, hey, Il, hey, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. W-C-W-R, W-C-W-R. What do you think? And then you're going to stand in front of me and do this, and I'm going to be doing this with my arms, and it's, oh, what a good time we'll have. Yep, and there's nothing funny about that at all unless you're on an island hungry and trying to win a million dollars. <laughs> and cutting down whoever you need to in your way, uh, who is dancing with you. Yes, that's it's right. Good. That was crazy. So we went right from there, big, funny, great moment to to Aubrey, who uh, apparently she likes the word dialogue. She says dialogue about 20 times in this episode because they start showing her how she's repeated the same exact thing to everybody she's talked to. The last time she was on, she was a very strategic player, and she really, she just basically, uh, you know, got herself out of the game, and maybe Joe with her if they don't like him either. Now, I wonder if do you think that was a little unfair to Aubrey, and that a lot of players do that, or was she unique in that way, the, the kind of saying the same thing to so many different players in one-on-one -on -one situations? 
Oh, you're, you're exactly right, because that's exactly what they do. Uh, that's what they, they try to do. And she really, I think everybody kind of has an eye on her, just like she was saying. I mean, I think of how many people say to each other that they, they want to go to the end of the game with that person. Speaking of bad, what was the story with Wendy wearing that thing on her face, the uh, buff? Yeah, I didn't understand that either. It didn't seem to be very cold because no one else was and people were, you know, wearing minimal clothing. She just did, wanted to cover her entire face at that moment. I think so. But did she think that that perhaps that their that survive, survivor buff would prevent some germs? Maybe it was uh, medically compliant, reduce colds and, and uh, fevers that often go along with the flu? 99.9% of germs. Yes. I, had, I had a more sinister thought. I, I thought she was planning on robbing the island convenience store. You know, you might be right. Uh, or robbing uh, when, well, she doesn't know about the other island yet, but she could uh, sneak up on Reem with that oh, yeah. and scare her. <laughs> sneak up on Reem while she's doing laundry. But uh, we, started, we started off the show, uh, Reem, a uh, little... Dramatic. What do you think? Let's listen to that. What? There's no timeline on this? Edge of extinction. What does that mean? I'm stranded. <laughs> That's funny, even when I re listen to it now. <laughs> so. The gamut of emotions. Yes, the Oscars were last week. And uh, I don't know when the Emmy Awards are coming up, but Reem is really, she's really putting on a top, uh, an A performance. She's, at worst, she's the, in the leader so far for next year's Oscars. Yes. Or Emmys, whichever, t- whichever one's television, Emmys, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and I got a funny feeling, I don't know. I think that she's not stranded. What do you... Yeah, I mean you you've got uh you've got some cameramen that might be able to help you out and I'm sure there's a way to get what you need. Oh, she's fighting putting up that white flag. Oh man, what a fighter. <laughs> she's she's like Rocky in uh Rocky 4 when he's just he's agonizing over whether he should throw in the towel when his friend de- dear friend Apollo is fighting uh what's the Russian's name? Ivan Drago. But she's all alone, her and the camera crew. A mere 20 people. Stranded. Yes. <laughs> in a helicopter constantly searching, circling above. <laughs> yep. War Dog got some uh, solid FaceTime last night, didn't he? Sure did. Yeah, he's, he's uh, stepped into the, the middle of things more in this episode. Yeah, let's check out uh, what he had to say. Losing our second challenge definitely is deflating. It hurts. But now I'm thinking maybe this is not a binary equation of just Wentworth or Wendy. Okay, so War Dog now thinks he's Christian from last season. That's what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, binary equation. He doesn't realize that's like, what is that now? And we cover binary equations, what, in fourth grade? <laughs> War Dog, the mathematician. I like this next one. Go ahead and play the next one. <laughs> wow, that was nice. He sang us a little song, one of his songs. They should have. That should be uh, their song when they go to tribal. Yeah, now both tribes have a song. That's right. I want the plan to be my plan, but I want everybody else to feel like it's their plan too. And he's the first person that's ever wanted that, in, in not only the show, <laughs> but in the world of business or even anything in life, right? He is personifying the movie Inception right here. You've got to plant an idea in someone. If you have to go into their dreams, so be it. But it's not a dream. A plan is not just a binary equation. I wonder what Christian would have to say about that. Have we figured out why they're calling him War Dog yet? Yeah, well, a war, if you if you break the word down, a war is good and a dog is good. So he's a war dog. Yeah, I like it, George. Let's see what uh, Kelly had to say this week. 
there has been a shift. And I'm just like, if I were in their shoes, what would I do? I thought that was going to be the first person that got a cuss word through Survivor. <laughs> Go ahead and play that again, because I listened to it like two or three times. There has been a shift. And I'm just like, <laughs> if I were in their shoes, what would I do? You can still hear it, so that's great censorship, right? That That is perfect censorship. That's the kind <laughs> we like here. Well, that certainly got my attention. I think the highlight... You know, maybe it was a set. It was a low light for for Keith. Keith wanted to stay so bad. He was just that was the the thing he wanted to do, right? Keith, for real. That's three votes, oh, Keith. God. One the Wentworth. One the Wendy. Second person voted out of Survivor. Edge of extinction. Keith, that's four. That's enough. Need to bring me a torch. Wow! 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 I don't think y'all are still going to win challenges. <sighs> Keith, the child spoke. God. Dang, dang, dang. Dang it. You have a decision to make. If you want a chance to get back in the game, take the torch and get in the boat. Whew. If you do not want to play anymore, follow this path and your adventure will end. Oh my God. So, I think the overriding theme there is what, Bill? Dang? <laughs> I think he was telling us that Luol Dang is his favorite basketball player. So the first thing, in case somebody's listening to this that isn't actually watching, Keith's physical ability, it would, I, I would be able to beat him in anything so far. And that's <laughs> with barely being able to walk. His swimming ability made Donathan from last season look like Mark Spitz. And when they were trying to move that snake around, he's like, he's just trying to get out of the cage. He's like, self-preservation. <laughs> get me out of here. Then at the end, it probably lasted for another minute or two where he just, he's walking around trying to decide, and he's praying, trying to decide what to do, whether to stay in the game or go home. And this was after being so upset that he was voted out. I don't understand why he didn't want to stay. 30 seconds prior, like, he, he uh, that could be an easy choice. Well, dang, dang, dang. I think <laughs> we're done talking about all the highlights. Dang. Dang, I, I guess it's time for Tim and Tim. Dang. Reem is on an island by herself, but what she doesn't realize is every time Bob Gibson went to the hill, he was figuratively by himself and literally by himself especially in Game 7s in 1967 and 1968. We gave him no offensive backup, and yet he went out there every day, and he did it with a smile on his face. Kelly said there has been a shift, not unlike the dramatic rise in infield shifts in Major League Baseball. Although this is nothing new, as teams would shift going back to Ted Williams. Keith couldn't decide whether to continue the game. We didn't have a choice. You want your paycheck? You get yourself on the field. It doesn't matter whether you're facing the 1961 Yankees in a series that almost was impossible to win or whether you're facing the, new, the brand new New York Mets in 1962. They didn't have any trouble showing up for a game. I don't see why he's having trouble. One man who chose not to play but in the long run made it so baseball players could play for a more lucrative deal was Kurt Flood. 
Flood is one player who never chose to raise the white flag. Okay, thanks, Tim and Tim. So hopefully next week, uh, I don't know how I'm going to be able to sleep coming up Wednesday night, so we'll see what happens. Tune in next week, and we'll continue our Survivor coverage. Bill, you, again, where are you at? Where can they find you at? SoundCloud.com slash Sports Limelight, and on Twitter, at Sports Limelight. Good night now. You can keep updated with all the happenings here at the West Coast Wiffle Report at our Facebook page, Arizona Wiffle Ball, or on Twitter, at AZ Wiffle Ball. Or send us an email to West Coast Wiffle Report at gmail.com. Uh, I mean, I think we're beating a dead horse. I don't think it's going to happen.